Ever since we were young fellas, my brother and I had always wanted to go on a serious adventure together. One that involved a certain level of risk and challenge, but also exploring and learning from a new culture. One that we could hunt and live off the land and truly test our skills in the wild. That's insane. That's pretty alarming, that so, so we're going to anchor. The wet season is properly here and the boat is half full of water. 20 kilos down here. Water. Look at that. Oh, Another perfect oh, Nautilus. Just dropped up at Dan's place and his family were here and they were just finishing off uh, the boat, the final touches um, to, the, to the canopy and the electrics and just cleaned it all out. Um, on this rainy, rainy afternoon, they've just done such a bloody good job. Um, it definitely won't do it justice now. Um, but I'll go through a full rundown of what, what work was done. But it's an absolute weapon. It's definitely going to get me out of strife for the longer form trips. Over engineered, outback, spec. A few finishing touches before we hit the road. It's a bit of a shambles at the moment, but it's all coming together in the final hour. So the back of the truck's looking like after decluttering and making it as concise as possible. The idea is here we're putting this underneath the trailer, the shade cloth, so we don't get stone chips. All right, time to hit the high road. Pull the low road or the medium road or oh, whichever one will have us. <laughs> Might even make our own road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the on-road trailer loves the on-road. So it goes the off-road. <laughs> just pulled into this roadhouse and there's a four week old baby calf. Apparently her name's Raya. Hey Raya, how are you? <laughs> so cute, so little. <laughs> just hit the dirt, the big dirt highway. We're just letting down the air out of the tires now from about 35 to 25 to give her a bit of give. We got the state of the art rock tamers on the back here. Indonesian coffee bag spec. And we're getting ready for another 10 hours on the dirt. So we pressed further into the North Country and it was an absolutely stunning contrast between the red dirt, cattle country and bushland ranges. On the convoy up, we had a bit of a crew. We had the Chris brothers who were going on their own adventure and launching up near that way, camping and fishing for a week. To good health. And there was a couple of cold ones. Stopped in at a creek for a swim and overall, Morale was sky high. But as the sun started to set, we had a few more hours to go. And we pressed forward through the night because we were really keen to make it there. She's made it. 25 year old straight six troopy with the brand new boat, 12 and a half years old between them. If you average it out. A fair bit of rock. But we made it. We made it, Jago. In one piece, against all odds. We made it, and the boat is going in the water. We won't be coming out again for another month, at least. It's a big moment. The boat's going in here in remote Cape York for the next four weeks, maybe three months. I'm not sure, but it is packed and ready for me and the brother to go on one hell of an adventure. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so we virtually had close to zero sleep. We woke up at 2 a.m. It was the only window we had to move this boat out safely, anchored off some rocks it's found itself off. 
found itself on. Hell of a lot of, hell of, a lot of mosquitoes dodging crocodiles. He slept down in the build. Hey, yarn, Jago. Living the dream, mate. Yeah, sleep was a pipeline dream. Bad idea. <laughs> That's how, not too bad. How was the first night sleeping at the back of the boat? It's actually pretty comfy. Nice rock, man. Man, there's so much gear, eh? Yeah. Gotta find a good system to pack everything up proper. We need somewhere to put this GME safety stuff easily on hand just in case. Alright, we're packed. Fishing gear, personal gear, Ooh. dive gear, 130 litres of extra fuel, food, cooking, camping gear. Jack, what else? Another 108 litres of fuel at the back. Two dive floats for blue water. Bearing gear, um, safety gear. Filming gear. Filming gear. Some sleeping gear up the top. And the rifle. Well, anchor's up. I reckon we're good to go, mate. Now we've got to see if we can get on the plane. <laughs> This is a very heavy boat. Yeah, a lot of weight. A defining moment. He's one of my favorite favorite fish to hunt and to eat. So picked a nice little medium sized one. So it'll be the perfect size for dinner. Well done man, it's a cracking fish. Uh, this car is flipping so hard, like four or five knots, which means it's not so safe to be diving with no one in the boat. So we've had a bit of a spear up on the reef and right up in the shallows, it's incredibly clean, but as soon as you step off the reef edge and the current starts pumping, it's really quite green, the water, which is bizarre because we're about 40 miles out off the mainland on the shelf, like the continental shelf where it trails off into two, 600 meters, two kilometers. So yeah, quite odd that the, um, that the Viz isn't playing the game to do some blue water drifts, but uh, that's all good because we're having a great time anyway. And uh, Jack got an awesome coronation trout. We've kept that for dinner and we're gonna have a fish now uh, to see if we can catch a couple of other fish for, for lunch and dinner for today because we worked up a serious bit of hunger. Um, fingers crossed we can get a fish, eh, Jacko? I reckon we're in for a pretty easy shot. Oh! We've just come out to the outer edge of the reef. We've thrown a couple of lines out the back to have a troll just to sound up, see where the bait is. First hook out for the trip. <laughs> We've literally been here for about three minutes. Oh, what is it? A little spano. Yeah, a little spano. Oh, nice. Hey. <laughs> Ooh. I hated that. We just realized he was here as well. All the sharks are on him. Oh, uh, okay. You can see him underneath. Hey, bro. Yeah. See the shark Ooh, just here? Sharks. He can smell blood right? in the water. Hungry for brekkie. Right, mate. All right. Little Mackie. Boss. And away he goes. A way to grow a hell of a lot bigger. Nice. How's that? We've literally been here three minutes. Ooh. Hey, shark. You're looking for a feed too, mate. We've done a circumnavigation around that reef there to find where the bait's sitting. It looks like the bait's sitting on this side, so it means the current's hitting this edge here. So we're gonna anchor the boat up, jump in together, and have a bit of a drift and see what's under the water. 
Um, had a bit of a fish around, but yeah, not much. Only one Mackie this just morning. One, one Mackie and a few few takes. Fair bit of bait though. It looks beautiful, so I'll just have to jump in and see what's in there. Yeah, it's also really warming up, so I'm keen to get in the water. So, oh. so Aaron's on the bust out. <laughs> popper, yeah. we saw a bit of commotion on the top. Yeah. Throwing the popper and straight away, absolutely got engulfed. Yeah, this is also my pretty standard popping attire. <laughs> it's what I do all my popping in. Oh, off the surface. GT. Oh, little jeets. Hell yeah. Oh, that was our popper. That is not ideal. We don't have many poppers. So I'll jump in and hear it. <laughs> that tells me two things. Either grab by the tail next time, or have far heavier leader. Bugger. <sighs> oh no. We'll probably find that washed up on the beach in the next week. <laughs> well that's it. If you pop up onto the reef around there, you should start to catch the GT. Aaron's just got absolutely buffed on the popper. Whoa, Check this out. Oh, it was such a good take. It looked like a reefy. It didn't seem like a jeet. I know, but it, I don't know what it is. I haven't seen it. How good was that surface take? Oh, I just smashed it. Yeah. Woo! Oh, it is a GT. It's a bit bigger than that last one. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Oh, he smacked it. Let's grab it by the tail. Yeah, man. Check this out. Ooh. GT! Right. How's that? First fish on the line. On the popper. Beautiful jeet. All right, we'll get the hooks out of you, mate. Yeah. How bloody good's that? Just in between uh, spots in the water. There was a heap of bait pumping in the shallows. So we threw out a popper. You got this beautiful little GT. But today, it's all about the catch and release. So, see you next time, bud. Busca! Like a rocket. Off to terrorize the shallows. Oh, shark, 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 oh, no. no. Just shark. Oh, man. Did you see that at the surface? Nah. Just a massive shark just grabbed whatever the fish was. Ate the whole fish, ate the lure. Oh, it's such a shame. There's a few casualties on the lures this morning. We're fighting quick, we don't want to lose this one to the sharks. Last one got smashed by sharks. Oh, he's going nuts, he's coming to the top. Yeah, do you want me to turn? No, he's coming to the top, he's being chased. Oh, what is it, big spano? Big spano, it's not on the right side of the boat. All right, you ready? You just go forward and right, yeah. I'll take the slack. All right. Oh, look at the big schooler, there's sharks on him. Oh, really? That's big schooler. Oh, yeah. Oh! Sharks are all over him. Sharks are everywhere. They're on him. They're on him. Oh, shit. Want me to get him? Yep. Careful mate, he's still pretty green. Whoa, that's a great Whoa. fish. Look at all the sharks. So many sharks. Down there, looking for our mackerel. Oh, look at the shark just there. Look at him. Oh, oh, come on mate. I don't mean to tease you guys, we're just bleeding it. Jack, well done on that mackerel. This one's man. ours. Sharks nearly got him. We weren't gonna lose another fish and another lure. So. Yeah, we're gonna eat him up for lunch. Oh, I reckon we cure it in some vinegar and, and let it cook in that, and then we can marinate it up. Sounds good to me, we'll brother. Do the rest, rest on the grill tonight. Woo! Oh, I'm so excited. All right. Takes the pressure off. Yeah. Here, Mum was thinking we were gonna starve, eh? Starve from These it. two here. <laughs> These two fish. Their lunch and dinner. And the sharks. Not for and you guys. sharks. Oh, Jack Gallagher. He's pumping it. Oh, I reckon it's done a little, little mac. It's sitting deep though. Oh. Sharks onto it. Oh. Oh, no oh, way. No way. 
Oh, oh what? It's, it's hooked, it's just hooked. It's just hooked. Oh no, it's just hooked. Right? It's only just hooked. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, what? Oh, get the get the hooks out of him, eh? Hold that up. That is a spectacular fish. Oh, that is insane! How beautiful is this coronation trout? It just walloped a lure in about 15 meters of water. Wow, man. We've got enough for dinner, so we're gonna let this one go to fight another day. Breed up, make lots of coro babies. Oh! And away he goes. I love that man. It's a special fish. Straight on. You're gonna reverse up, man. Are you right? Let's get this other line in. Oh, we're off too. You're off. Oh, double hook up. Double. Getting away from the shark, oh, man. Once it's close to the boat, it's oh. safe country. Oh, I can't do much here either. Oh, man, this is a big fish, eh? Hey? Same. Oh. 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 I'm starting to get a bit on it now. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm close to the boat. Oh, mine's dropped. Oh. Mine's dropped. I think it cut me off, man. <laughs> Did it? Yeah. Good spatos. Holy. Man, that's a massive spatter. Yeah, it was a school of them, I think. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Hopefully it just unhooks itself. Come on, mate, huh? just unhook yourself. Man, that is a serious fish. Oh, yeah. I just want to get a good look at that fish. Alright, you ready? Yep. We'll get him up. You got a good handle on him? Yeah. Okay, put that in the rod holder so we don't lose him. Oh, look at that. Look That's at a that. serious Beautiful fish. Beautiful Spanish mackerel. We've already got one, so we'll let him go, eh, mate? <laughs> I was just holding him. And he had one flicker just shot off and out of the boat and just left some scales on the way, on the boat and on myself. So... He's back safely and I'm a little greasy. Slippery mackerel gypsy. <laughs> Gone. That's not him, that's the sharks. <laughs> not too far behind. Hi. <laughs> you need to jump in the water there, Joe. Yeah, I'm a slippery mackerel. <laughs> yeah. We've just been walloped by Spanish mackerel. Had a double hook up, lost one of them in a brand new bloody lure. Um, but it caught two fish. But look at this, 17 meters up from 40 and there's just bars of fish. Some of which are probably sharks, but some could be some desirable fish down the bottom. We'll see how we go, eh? <laughs> what's, what's the problem, Jack? Uh, every time I drop a jig, it just gets busted off instantly by Mackies. There's just too many Mackies under us, so we've got to move spots. We're trying to get jigs to the bottom, and on the way down, they'll hit them and snap them off, and if you Try to jig them a couple of times, they're just going to get nailed at the bottom, so... And we've already got one Spanish mackerel. We've got one, and that is enough. <laughs> so, we're trying, yeah, we're trying to target some, some redfish off the bottom, but, yeah, simply just can't get down there through the school of mackies, so... I don't think we've ever, ever encountered this problem before, where we're literally we're trying to get ourselves away from mackerel, because at home they're just so sought after, because we can actually keep the fish and take it home to friends and family and eat it for the next week. But here we can't, so we've got to keep moving. And that's all bait. There's mackerel attacking them on the outskirts. Anyway, I think we're going to try a couple of other more, a couple of more spots here, and then <laughs> head back into the islands. We could try to get a couple of mackies on top water. Yeah, that'd be fun. We pop. <laughs> I just don't want to keep losing lures. I know. I know. We'd, we'd get some good aerials though. Which, is it worth it? Popper for aerial. We're just burning it back into the mainland and we've come across this tiny sand cake. It's probably not far um, from being completely submerged by the high tide, but we've, we've picked it and there's probably like four or five different species of birds on there. There's different terns, seagulls, so and, um, mutton birds, there's all sorts of stuff on there. Really cool to see. So we're gonna pull up here and have a bit of lunch. Yep. 
We've chosen to go the Spano Maco for lunch at this sand cave. We're just filling up half a slab. We're going to chop it into fine pieces. And then we brought some white vinegar. Now, white vinegar is a really good one to have in the boat because if you get stung by a box jelly or an irukandji or sea lice or something that stings you, um, you can put it on, like that's the, the go-to treatment, is vinegar. But also, if you don't have a, have a fire or stove on you, like we don't right here, you can cook your fish in it and keep it for the whole afternoon. curing bucket in here I've just thrown nice little pieces of Spanish mackerel from the tail end and then covered it in vinegar so the vinegar being acidic is just going to slowly cook this and then once it's cooked I'll drain it off and then we'll add some other herbs and spices a bit of oil and, and it'll be beautiful so we'll leave that for probably half an hour to cure and come back to it then How was that aerial eagle eye view of the K? It was honestly sensational. It's so specky. The wind's come up a little bit now, but um, because of the protection of this sand spit here, it's still calm enough and really pleasant. To have a bit of tucker in the form of hooked mackerel in vinegar. Yeah. So look at that. We put it in and it was pretty translucent and it's now gone white. It's been about 20 minutes, 20, 20 to 25 minutes yeah. and it's that So cooked. it's cooked to the outside, a little bit raw still on the inside, but certainly not offensive. If you left it there, it'll just slowly keep cooking. And we're gonna drain that vinegar off. When packing for this trip food-wise, a couple of the essentials were a hell of a lot of condiments. So that when you're eating pretty much rice, flour and seafood, you can zhuzh it up because it's generally two or three meals a day is that. Um, so we've got plenty of condiments from chili to paprika to garlic to basil, salt, pepper, everything in between. We've grabbed four liters of extra virgin olive oil to keep mum proud, proud Maltese woman. We've got uh, a couple of limes that I don't know how long they're gonna last, but we're using one of them in there. And we've also got a packet of wraps. So we're gonna make wraps. Oh, and onion. Cut a little bit of this up through it. This is about as much of vegetable as we have. Pretty mackerel. Wrap that one. How's that lunch for the first day of the trip? <laughs> it's uh, it's 3 p.m. and that's what we're eating. Enjoy, brother. Oh, I will. We worked hard for this one. Ended up some sharks, lost a couple of lures. Yeah, drove three days, three hours in the boat. Oh. Mm. How good? So salt and vinegar. Chips, but with Mackey. <laughs> Don't really <a> Mackey. <laughs> so delicious. Mm. It's nice just eat and sit in the shade. I really need the feed. Just good. Some little shark working up on the edge of that sandbar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looking good. Zinked <laughs> up. Good to get. We've got a bit of a school brewing up out to the east. So we're gonna pin it back into towards near the mainland. There's a few island groups there. 
um, or go against the coast. We'll just play it by what the, the wind's doing when we, we get in and start hugging the coast. So yeah, we got a two hour steam in, so see you back in there. Let's do it. Oh, you good thing, you heavy thing. about an hour and a half punch from that sand K and the wind blew up a little bit but we're back in closer near the mainland and near an island group trying to find a place to um, to pull up camp tonight and the battery's just about dead on this camera so we're gonna find a turn the cameras off and find a camp to stay for the night and then we'll, we'll touch base in the morning Jackie how was oh, the first day brother little ray coming through the shallows oh, yeah, here the That's right. beautiful clean water we got some really nice fish we got to check out a bit of the outer reef, so really special first day of the trip. Yeah, Stoked any, to be here. Any lessons learned or um, parting, parting words oh. of wisdom? Mate? I think I'm the biggest, spot here. No, biggest lesson of the day I think is is everything you make, you need to make cape spec. It's a it's a new spec we're painting. It just needs to be ten times stronger than anything else you use in terms of leader, lures, hooks. Um, it's just the fish and the sharks. Are big and aggressive, and and um, your gear needs to be up to scratch. So everything needs to be cape spec. Cape spec. I completely agree, man. Uh, if you've come along for the ride this far, thanks for watching. We have set sail today for. I'm not sure. I think Jacko is going to be here for at least three or four weeks, and then I don't know how much longer it's going to keep rolling till then. But yeah, for a, for a month or two anyway. So yeah, excited, nervous, combination of the both. Bring it on. They dig up ghost crabs, which I don't really mind. Uh, there's plenty of ghost crabs. They also dig up green turtle eggs, and they quite often have a 100% destruction rate if they find a nest. They'll kill every single egg. So um, we've got permission from the traditional owners uh, through this country here on the beach. We see pigs to shoot them. So keeping an eye out, we'll see.